Hello, and welcome to Crom Cooks, the only channel dedicated to teaching you how to do improv cooking at home. Now, one of the key skills of improv cooking is starting with some random ingredient and using that to motivate or inspire a new dish. And today's episode is inspired by one of the all-star ingredients in the kitchen, fresh basil. But as you can see here, mine is not so fresh and on the verge of going bad. So my go-to move with basil is to make a pesto out of it. But today I wanted to try something a little different. So that involved putting it on a wire rack and letting it dry out. This would work on its own if you just let it sit out for a few days. But I wanted to accelerate that by putting it in the oven with the light on, uh, which kept it about 110, 115 degrees. And after about 24 hours, this is how it came out. As you can see, all the leaves and the stems are completely dried out, effectively preserving the basil. But let's see if this effort was really all worth it. And I gotta say, this does have a lot of similarities with dried basil that you could just buy at the store, but the flavor is so much more intense and robust. So it actually reminded me of one of my favorite dishes of all time, pasta carbonara, which boasts a really intense pepper flavor. That's when I had an idea. Maybe I can make a carbonara type dish, but instead of using pepper, I can crush up this basil and use that as the main ingredient in the sauce. So instead of bacon or guanciale or some other cured meat, I decided to use these mushrooms to bring that meatiness and savoriness to the dish. And now that I'm going completely off script and not doing a traditional carbonara, I thought, why not add more vegetables? So I pulled out a couple bell peppers, an onion, and some celery to make a classic mirepoix. According to wikipedia.org, mirepoix consists of onions, carrots, and celery. Okay, okay, it's not classic. Carrots would be classic, but bell peppers are just as sweet, and I had those available, so that's what I use instead. And of course, you cannot have carbonara without your eggs and your Parmesan cheese. So, with all these ingredients combined, I made... Pasta Gardenara, a vegetarian version of pasta carbonara. Now, let's check out how to make it. The first thing we want to do is prepare our mirepoix. So that involves slicing the onion vertically, and then horizontally, and then crosswise to make a medium to small dice with the onion. With the celery, I like to use these little white ends as handles to hold on to, and then I slice really long, thin strips down the middle, maybe two, repeat that for all the celery, and then grab them together, rotate them, and chop it all the way down, doing a medium to small dice, similar size as the onion. Bell peppers are cool because they tell you exactly where to slice. You take these little wrinkles and use those as your guide to slice around the core. Repeat that on all sides, and you have a perfectly cored bell pepper. Well, I have some room for improvement. Let's try it again with the orange one, do the same thing, and a little better this time. Now we're gonna take all these bell pepper petals and slice them lengthwise, then we'll rotate them, chop them all the way down, and just like the celery and onions, do a medium to small dice. And then mix all those together and you have this beautiful mirepoix. And the final veggie to prep are the mushrooms, which I want to be more prominent in the final dish, so I'm gonna chop these into a little bit bigger chunks than the other vegetables. And before cooking the vegetables, we're gonna prep our egg mixture. Check it out, one hand. That's right, fish out those shells. That's what you get for showboating. Then we're gonna grate a whole bunch of Parmesan cheese, whisk it together, and throw it in the fridge. Heading over to the stove, we're gonna add four tablespoons of olive oil to make sure we can coat all of our veggies. Add a little salt, then stir and cook, stir and cook, add some pepper, cook some more, and we're gonna cook all the way down until we get a really thick, heavy mixture. I want these veggies to almost melt into the pasta, so we need to cook them till they're very soft. Then to the same pan, we're gonna add a little oil, followed by the mushrooms and a pinch of salt. To help the mushrooms release some of their moisture, we can add a splash of water and then cover them. As that evaporates, the mushrooms will release their own moisture and start cooking so they become less spongy. We'll repeat that process, this time using white wine, which adds some acidity and helps us scrape up all this fawn that's built up on the pan. Once these veggies have cooled down a little bit, we can safely add them to our egg mixture without cooking the eggs, which is gonna help us prepare for final assembly later on. And now to prep the true star of the show, the dry basil. First, I peel the leaves and put them into a mortar, crush them up with my hands a little bit, and then use the pestle to grind them into a smooth powder. Then we add it to the egg mixture, mix it all up, and now it's ready for the pasta. Speaking of which, we're gonna cook in a big pot of boiling water, 
Make sure it's well salted. I'm using a penne because, you guessed it, that's what I had, but really any pasta will do. Spaghetti, bucatini, fettuccine, linguine, rigatoni, macaroni. Sorry, Italian words just make me want to start singing. But whichever pasta you use, it's always important to get a little bit of pasta water before it's done cooking and you throw the water out. Once the pasta's done cooking, we need to add it to our egg mixture. I like to add a little bit of pasta to the eggs to help temper them and bring them up to temperature without scrambling them. Then I add a little bit more, bringing up the temperature higher, mix it, before returning them back to the original pot. This gives me a lot more room to really mix things up. Oops, we got a jumper. Let's get you back in the party, buddy. Along with a little bit of that pasta water to help thin things out. The trick here is to constantly keep stirring putting it on the heat to cook off some of that moisture and help thicken it up, and then take it off the heat before it starts scrambling. And you keep repeating that until you get this really rich, thick, creamy texture with the sauce. And then we'll put it to a bowl, add some mushrooms on top, and of course grate a little more Parmesan cheese. Well, it certainly looks the part, but the real question is, how does it taste? And we want to make sure to get a good bite, including the pasta, the mushrooms, the veggies, some of that cheese. And this came out so freaking good. The best way to describe it is it really tastes like the whole garden is having a party in your mouth. And the DJ of that party is definitely the basil. See how it coats the pasta with this magic flavor dust? This is what pepper does in traditional pasta carbonara, so this is exactly what I was going for. So that's how we can start with some fresh basil and end with a vegetarian take on one of my favorite pasta dishes, pasta gardenara.